Greetings ladies and gentlemen, it is I am the one and only Sonic the Hedgehog here, aka the Blue Blur, aka Blue Justice, and I am back for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos once again. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some more of Let's Play of Sonic Frontiers for the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X slash S, PC Steam, and finally the Nintendo Switch. So, last time, we have pretty much almost concluded everything for the sake of the forms of cyberspace stages. Like, as a result, I think, if I recall correctly, we've only got two missions left for those p two particular cyberspace stages, which are, I would say, uh, stage 4-F and also 4-I. So, because of that, yeah, we haven't got far left of it though, especially concerning for the fact that at this point in time, that we basically almost conclude everything when it comes to cyberspace stages. So because of that, yeah, everything else will be pretty much encountered for. So today, for this video is about the fact that, well, if you couldn't tell already, since we have now switched over to Tails this time, because, well, let's just say, for this particular video, is that not only we can able to actually find the last few of those uh, skill points, well, to be more specifically, that we need to be able to find the last few Coco skill parts for not only for Tails, but also for Amy and Knuckles as well. So just in case I just want to get this out of the way. And I believe, if I recall correctly, there's also some more character interactions that we do need to find as well. So, it might take a bit of a while though, especially concerning for the fact that at this point in time, I just need able to just was able to bring this up because relatively speaking I was about the fact that we've almost pretty much gone through everything for the most part so anyway and uh, in addition to that like we said before is about the fact that hopefully we should be able to actually completely done everything um, in regards of the forms of the cyberspace stages when it comes to the final two missions that we need to take care of and both of which would does manage to able to require us to able to you know, take those animals into their safe spots, which, nothing, uh, groundbreaking to deal with, but, as a result, oh, I did screw up. And it doesn't help about the fact that I've lost my ability to able to utilize, uh, Tails' mech, but, um, hopefully we're able to save that particular, uh, Guardian battles for later, just because, no matter what, though, it's about the fact that I need to able to try to able to max out my rings count, just in case, before I'm able to actually take care of the bombs of the rest of the Guardians anyway. So, anyways though, so a few things I want to explain for this point today is, potentially speaking though, well, until specifically during later on today, is that today's day is of course there is the 7th of December today, in some cases in 2023 today. Not only today's today marks the 5th anniversary of the game's release of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, or... Dayato Smash Bros. Special, from the likes of the fonts of the Japanese version or something like that. So as a result, yeah, it's been five years ago since when Super Smash Bros. Ultimate first came out for the Nintendo Switch. So yeah, happy fifth anniversary of the game's release. Even though I haven't been onto that game for a while, mainly because I pretty much already concluded everything when it comes to the forms of not only getting, uh, you know, every single spirit, in addition to that, we've completed every single classic mode characters, except with the forms of the Mii Fighters, just because they're not included, for able to include in during the forms of being a classic mode. So, and in addition to that though, it's about the fact that today's day marks the actual main event, or should I say, the last event when it comes to gaming communities alike, is potentially speaking though, today's day is the game rewards for this point. So because of that, although it's kind of unfortunate for me, I don't think it's possible for me to be able to mention about this right now, but hopefully by that time until the next couple of weeks time, hopefully we should be able to actually mention more about it until God knows if, uh, you know, Silver is about to finally go back on to Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link at some point, and in addition to that though, it's about the fact that as soon as I'm able to actually take care of the forms of, yeah, you see that right there, Master Coco, or Master King Coco, that's where you deserve it, after what I was just gonna go for that particular frustrating trial, or to be more specifically, if I go for hard mode, oh my god, that would be, kind of feels, feels a bit all over the place, you know? Also, I think it's probably just me anyway, but I'm pretty sure it's possible you can able to actually hop into the other 
uh, trial tower with Knuckles, if you couldn't tell already, just because, well, obviously, since that we've already maxed out our rings counter, as you can tell, and because of that, though, I should be able to actually have myself infinite amount of gliding, even though I haven't exactly landed on that particular uh, trial tower over there, but that's just mainly because I just want to show you with the another methods you can able to deal with while trying to deal with a lot, I mean a lot of exploration when it comes to like, you know, specific characters you can able to actually interact with, but either way though, I apologize again for the fact that uh, my commentary is a little bit uh, wishy-washy for those points today, but that's just mainly because at this point in time, that uh, we almost nearly at the end of this game, so because of that, and hopefully by that time until next year in 2024, then we should be able to actually do some other bunch of Let's Plays in the future. So because of that, so yeah, let's just go ahead and focusing on the last uh, Coco skill points that we need to find for Knuckles. So hopefully it should be a little bit more self-explanatory to able to actually just try to able to figure something out. So any anyways though, um... There's also another thing I surprisingly forgot to comment on back in during the forms of been on Tuesday, if I recall correctly, is potentially speaking though, I overshoot. Ah, uh, oh well, I suppose no big deal anyway, because obviously we'll re respawn right onto that specific point right there, so... Anyway though, so yeah, one thing I surprisingly forgot to mention about during the course of in the last video on this is that recently, yes, uh, Sonic Dream Team has recently came out just recently for, let's just say it's been about two days ago actually, since that game first came out on the Apple Arcade. And uh, I'm curious to know what the gameplay style is going to be plays out to be. Mind you, I haven't exactly looked upon that much of Let's Plays of that game just yet. Well, mind you, no matter what though, it's about the fact that at this point I'm about to be able to be almost preparing for able to actually decide to able to watch certain announcements or specifically certain nominations they're able to get for the game awards this year so uh, but at that again though we'll have to discuss more about it until specifically next week for god knows until we're we able to decide able to finish this game up for sonic frontiers and also just try to able to caught up with the forms of zelda 2 the adventure of link and uh also, it's about the fact that Jewel is actually now onto, presumably speaking, she's on, she's onto the halfway point in terms of the forms of Metroid Zero Mission, which, as a result, she goes by a lot faster than I thought it was. So, kudos to Jewel, though, because obviously she's a really, really cool character from the likes of the Rio film series. So, anyway, so there's some more skill points for Knuckles right here. So, hopefully, we should be done by then. So, all we need left now is just, obviously, we need to find those last few skill points for the sake of the forms of Amy, and that'll be about it, basically. So, but, but before, before we're able to actually go ahead and deal with that, we need to find some more character directions, except this time, we're able to actually deal with them as Knuckles. So, it might take a bit while, though, so hopefully we should be able to find those in time. We've got three emeralds so far. Making good progress. Oh, really? Well, it looks like I'm doing better on my end, treasure hunter. Put a sock in it. The enemies get more persistent with their interference, like that shockwave earlier. But don't worry, I'll take care of it with my fists. Just you wait. Oh, and by the way, on the subjects when it comes to the forms of how many days we've got left for the sake of the forms of this particular topic, well, since no matter what though, as I mentioned this before, today's day is of course the 7th of December, so that means we've only just got about 18 more days to go until Christmas is approaching, so because of that, although let me know in the comments down below for the question of the day, what is your wish list will be like for this year's Christmas? I'd like to hear your thoughts. We don't have time to go looking for more shells. Hmm. Why would the ancients waste precious water in a desert? I'll bet that cannon was a device that controlled water storage. The oasis must have served as a dam, and it was designed so the position of the faucet could be adjusted. A dam? But all the water went down the drain. The drained water should have been redirected into various watering holes. If only there was something like that cannon from Ares Island here. 
So yeah, with that being said though, because, well, honestly, I have no idea what I was going to be asking for the sake of the forms of this year's Christmas this time around though. Because here's the thing, because I've already pretty much got most of these items anyway for the likes of pre-ordering stuff in the past few days. So as a result, I don't think it's possible for me to able to actually get the new game until next February, specifically February 2024. Like, for instance, with Mario vs. Donkey Kong Remake, and until next March, in March 2024, it will be Princess Peach Showtime, and I don't know about the forms of when exactly is Luigi's Mansion 2 HD will be releasing, or Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door Remake will be releasing, but that again, we shall see. Oh, and also, we've only just got about, I would say, 8 more days to go until Chicken Run Dawn of the Nuggets will be releasing on Netflix, which, speaking of Netflix though, I suppose I should probably save that particular topic until for later, because, well, there's also another thing I want to address something about this as well, is that, do you guys even remember that I mentioned about this before, that, uh, you know, Cap King 74 is now continued playing through Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix? Apparently though, one thing I did not expect, that he's playing the game on PC Epic Store version, so I almost assumed that was going to be on the PS4, but change of platforms, I guess. Oh, it's Knuckles. Stop dilly dallying and go use those fists to get some work done. Stop ordering me around, or I'll use my fists on you. Such a witty retort. May I alert you to the fact that time is of the essence, and you are wasting time. What, you think I don't know that? I know that! Then go use your brute force to find those emeralds! But uh, either way, I almost assume for the fact that he's probably going to go for the chronological order when it comes to story uh, timeline for the actual Kingdom Hearts series, but apparently though he just goes into Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix instead of the forms of re-chain of memories, or uh, both by sleep Final Mix, or potentially speaking though with uh, 358 over two days for the uh, stuff of DS capture footage or something, or potentially speaking out just something else entirely. So, but even then, though, I'm sure he'll have a really, really damn good time with the forms of Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix so far, especially concerning for the fact that, well, you probably already know it's my favorite game in the series. How's it going, Treasure Hunter? Didn't expect to find you standing around wasting time. I was starting to get worried you wouldn't be able to find the emeralds. And you are wasting time if you're worrying about me. And what I found is pretty cool though, is that that was actually the third time that he's going to be playing for the game on PC. Because the first two being, which there are, uh, a ROM hack of Pikmin 2, which turns out to be Pikmin 251, and also Plants vs Zombies on PC Steam, and now he's going on to Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix on the Epic Store. attacking from so far away but when it does appear our time will come to an end if we don't gather the emeralds and prepare our chance of success will be zero but uh yeah that's as far as i can usually just to describe about the forms of that particular point worth noting for but either way so I'm pretty sure about the fact that he'll gonna be able to tackle through most of the content during the course of in the Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix or something, which I suppose that might be seems to be the case. So either way though, but we shall see. So anyway, there's also another explanation things I want to able to address something about this as well. Originally, I was decided able to take a break on Sonic Dash for a bit, but recently, during the course of in the past few days, I've got another cosmetic character. Four rotating rings on air 
Harvey's Island are ridiculously big. The four rings represent the four islands. And when they're rotating, they indicate the link with cyberspace is in effect. When a ring stops, it means there's some sort of abnormality in cyberspace. I'm certain there's a meaning behind their size as well. I imagine there are other functions I've yet to know about. How interesting. And that's what appears to be body forms of chrome silver. So it seems to be more specifically, I somehow almost got a gem pack for of uh cosmetic characters at this point when it comes to Sonic Dash. Although I should probably also want to address something about this as well, is that I suppose I should probably explain more about it until for later. But uh, obviously we've only got about two more days left until the last special for the Doctor Who 60th anniversary specials. There's no time. Leave the enemies to Sonic and focus on finding the emeralds. Fine, but what's up with them? Looks like some of them came back after getting beaten. They're defensive weapons created by the Ancients. They were once used to defend the Starfall Islands from foreign enemies. They had stopped functioning by the time the Doctor arrived, but I reactivated them when I connected to cyberspace to keep him safe. They are powered by Chaos Emeralds and are designed to automatically rebuild themselves by reacting to the gravitational pull of meteors, so they could continue to defend the home of the Ancients forever. Even with the Ancients gone, their Guardians must continue to carry out their duty to defend the island. Try to avoid them while you search for the Emeralds. And uh, that's as far as I can usually try to able to describe about the forms of this upcoming events in mind, so... Anyway, I should also mention about this as well, is potentially speaking though, I was expecting to try to able to actually access to Sonic Prime Dash, but unfortunately though, it does requires me to able to actually log in a Netflix account, and because of that, I somehow missed out quite a number of things for this point. Like, first of all, um, some more playable characters that it's only accessible during the course of in Sonic Prime Dash or something like that. And second, I did not notice there was actually a new environment you can able to explore, but only in during the forms of in Sonic Prime Dash, which as a result, despite it's for free, but unfortunately though, I can't be able to actually access that because uh, like I said before, it requires a Netflix account, so... Which is a little bit backwards to me though, especially concerning that unlike the regular Sonic Dash game, that uh, it was expecting for free, and you can able to actually access to every other parts, like usually anywhere you wanted to, so... Oh jeez, I totally forgot about the forms of the Star Fall Plus, but... I suppose it's time to able to actually decide able to grind as many of those things for Knuckles, so hopefully that should be the case. So, but sometimes though is about the fact that, well, sometimes, you know, grinding for some parts might take a bit while, especially concerning about the fact that unlike in uh, the base game, that you can able to actually just activate the slot machines, whilst I think it's certainly as possible we can able to activate the slot machines, but either way though, it's been about two days ago since I, since I actually have last played this for sure, because like I said before, hopefully we're able to get this game finished before we move on to other Sonic Let's Plays, which are maybe potentially for its redo Let's Plays every once in a while, for not only for Sonic the Hedgehog 4 within Episode 1, Episode Metal, and Episode 2, and uh, in addition with that, there's uh, Sonic Mania, which I was expecting to be able to try to do a redo Let's Play of that game too. Mainly because, while the quality itself is fine, it's just about the fact that in the beginning portion of that particular playthrough, my god, the commentary sounds way too off. And especially noticeable concerning for the fact that, hopefully, by that time until next year in 2024, we should probably tackle through the latest Sonic game in the series, which appears to be Sonic Superstars. So, hopefully they'll able to come and what to expect. So, anyway, um... I suppose, with that being said though, let's get this uh, out of the way, and as a result, no matter what though, there's also another thing I want to classify for mentioning about this as well. Let's talk about the forms of my final thoughts of the forms of My Little Pony Make You Mark series, and I do not like the series. <laughs> That's why I can really have to admit it though right away, I honestly am not a big fan of uh, Make You Mark series, because, well, the budget is a bit lower compared to the forms of how it does it in a new generation movie, 
And on top of that, the story arcs just feels a bit convoluted. And on top of that, everything else just seems a bit, well, all over the place. Like, for instance, there was actually this recent special called uh, My Little Pony Secrets of Starlight, which, thankfully, it does not usually focuses around Journey forms of Starlight Glimmer, thankfully, because obviously, she's obviously gonna be fine to able to actually stick around with uh, G4 stuff, because obviously, no matter what though, she's actually a really cool character in my opinion. During the course of been Generation 4, for My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, as you probably already expect. But uh, aside from that, well, what makes this a little bit off to me though, is the way that the ending plays out to be, in terms of the forms of Secrets of Starlight, which as a result, there's this new villain that was actually introduced in that particular special, and I'm not exactly sure what her name is though, because obviously it's been quite a few days ago since in June forms have been November 26th or something like that, and I'm gonna say, the series is dull, and I really did not enjoy it anymore. So because of that though, I just potentially just quit out G5 entirely, but that's just me. So, although it does have some interesting points from time to time, but it's just that it's nothing compared to the forms of how it does in this superior G4 in my opinion, which is of course, friendship is magic and all that stuff, but that's just me. And also, I just was not expecting for that particular ending portion of that particular Secrets of Starlight special, and because of that, it ends up with the forms of a, let's just say for this unexpected cliffhanger, and as a result, I get the horrible feeling that Make Your Mark series is never going to continue, so, yeah, it's gonna be pretty bleak at this point, so, at least if I have to be quite frank here, it's about the fact that maybe, uh, Tail Tail might able to actually get adjusted things, but I think my biggest gripe I have with the forms of uh, Make You Mark series as a result is that it feels way too similar to the forms of Tail Tail. We've all seen it. A lot of those plot elements can go absolutely nowhere in terms of progression. For a series called My Little Pony Make Your Mark, it sure just ha has at least has the most interesting plot connections. Nothing stupidly happens during the forms of that particular series. Although, I get it because of the forms of Tail Tail might able to actually get adjusted things. But of all the actual series in Journey G5 as a result, Make Your Mark just seems a little bit of a waste of time. So as a result, no matter what though, it does have some of these uh, similar um, story scenarios in between it two. Like for example with the Alpaline's defeats, and on top of all that stuff though, it just remarkably feels a bit too similar to one another. So because of that, yeah, I just basically just give up watching uh, Make You Mark at this point. Especially concerning for the fact that it does kind of reminds me of a similar situation as the forms of how it does it when, uh, do you guys even remember the ending of Sonic the Hedgehog 4 Episode 2? When you're trying to do match able to defeat uh, the Hearts of the Death Egg Mark 2 as the final boss in that game. And as a result, the ending plays out to be is when Sonic and Tails barely escape from the Death Egg Mark 2 and that's all there is to it. And the death egg is usually exposed, and it still looks perfectly intact. And then, while well, meanwhile, the little planet from Sonic CD is trapped inside. And because of that, Episode 3 is cancelled, and that basically just somehow retcons the ending. So because of that, yeah, Little Planet has been trapped as the final ending, and Little Planet is doomed. So because of that, yep, it's all, all over the place. I will have to admit it the right way. Because of that though, yeah, i much rather just go back onto French Miss Magic, because I can at least manage to be able to enjoy some aspects, and not only that, my other main problem I have with Make Your Mark is that there's a lack of, uh, uh, world building here and there from time to time. I mean, sure, it does have some interesting set pieces, but I just wish there was actually more to it, and I really wish it was able to have more effort to it. I saw a mark on the pyramid wall. It was the same mark I saw in the sky when I said goodbye to the Coco. What could it mean? There are no definite records in the cyberspace archives, but it appears the ancients worshipped it as the symbol of a god. They believed in a god even with all of this amazing technology? I didn't expect that. Faith is an excellent way to shape a group's sense of kinship. However, the markings in the sky are a clear and observable phenomenon, and cannot be the manifestation of a miracle.
Whoa, what's up with that close-up of Sage? Well, and also at the same time though, I still have no words of what the heck just happens for those voice clips again, so... Anyway though, I suppose it really doesn't matter though, because I'm pretty sure we've almost done every single character interactions at this point. Even not only for the entire island, but also with the entire game itself. So because of that... Oh, there's also another gripe I have with the forms of Make You Mark series as a result, is obviously the budget cuts, and on top of that, the visuals, well... Pretty, but it's just about the fact it's nowhere near as amazing as the forms of how it does it for uh, uh, a new generation movie. And on top of that, with the majority of French of his magic, and on top of that, G4 movie. And it does feel remarkably similar to me, though, as one of those visual changes from the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass. We have to work together, so get used to me being here. Amy Rose. The one who admires Sonic. Oh. And are you a fellow admirer? Hmm? Now is not the time for this. Your focus should be on the Emeralds, not Sonic. Which, I must be honest, I have no idea why I somehow made that comparison, but... Either way, there are some good episodes for sure, for the sake of the forms of Make You Mark series, but the majority of them is not exactly that great, or nothing particularly that special either, so... That shockwave created a massive amount of electrical noise. It's meaningless data that's been compressed and deconstructed, but it will be especially effective against those without a corporeal form. How interesting. Why do you sound so excited? What are you planning? No, oh, as a scientific genius, analyzing what I see and then explaining it come as naturally as breathing. Well, I suppose the only best episode I can probably think about on top of my head, which appears to be, surprisingly enough, the Chapter 4's finale, just mainly because, no matter what though, I was quite pleasantly satisfied to able to see Misty did somehow manage to able to accomplish something like this. So, aside from that, the weakest episode to me though, is a tie between the majority of Chapter 1 and one of those episodes in Chapter 5, which I can't possibly think about on top of my head because I couldn't remember that much. What are you doing here? You sure do some fast searching. Well, I think it's important to stay focused on your goal, but it's not always easy. This island is so huge, I'm sure there are a lot of places I'll never be able to reach. Yeah, I'll keep a lookout for the emeralds from the sky. So yeah, that's as far as I can usually try to able to describe about my final thoughts of the entire My Little Pony Make Your Mark series. I mean... Let us know in the comments down below, because obviously, I'm just seriously, I'm not a big fan of it at the end, so I just basically give up on the series. Hurry up, or I'll find the emeralds before you. Wait, Knuckles, do you have any tips on finding emeralds? Tips? Just dig everywhere until you find them. That's all there is to it. I have a hammer, not a shovel. <sighs> that wasn't very helpful. Looks like I'll need to find them my own way. But uh, that's just me, especially noticeable how opinions really does matter, especially because everyone else does have their own opinions, which is understandably so. But either way, let's meet up with Eggman. While I was exploring Kronos Island with Sonic, I noticed lights would appear on the ground, or on the trunks of the trees at night. What was up with that? That data is the faint thoughts of the ancients, appearing in the real world as light. So, they're thoughts without shape, like the Coco. Why do they only appear at night? They're usually in hiding, for fear of the being that destroyed them. And when the moon rises, they feel safe enough to come out. <laughs> the poor little things. They've already lost their bodies, yet they're still afraid of being destroyed. 
But, uh, yeah. I would have liked able to explain something else, but I think it's probably best for me to able to mention about more details as soon as we're able to actually get onto the forms of the final two missions coming up for the likes of the final two cyberspace stages, at least specifically for Sonic only. So because of that, yo, let's go ahead and meet up with this another character direction right here. So either way, thankfully we've almost done with this point until we get on with the forms of the intense stuff. The Coco don't seem to be feeling so good. They're in much worse shape than us. Maybe it's because they're so much smaller. How are you feeling, Tails? The shockwave took a lot out of me. But I'm fine now. That disturbance from the sky is only getting more intense. Maybe our time limit is almost up. Got it. Let's get back to finding the emeralds once we make sure the Coco are safe. Alright, so after talking to Tails, I believe there is also a yet another Dr. Eggman conversation just around here. So I suppose it's not too far from here though, because thankfully we still managed able to actually access the fast travel, so... Down pyramid thing on Kronos Island. According to the information I've gathered in cyberspace, it's a terminal created by the ancients to get in and out of their spaceships. When they first arrived on this planet, they used their spaceship as a base of operations. They needed time to investigate whether the islands were habitable. They built a terminal to travel back and forth between the island and their ships. There were terminals built on other islands, but they were different in design. They've ceased to function. All that remains of the terminals is the wreckage of the elevators that were used for boarding. If you're curious, go and find the remains. But only if you're able to sort out the situation here first, that is. Oh yeah, I should also mention about this as well, is that let me know in the comments down below for the question of the day. Are you guys excited for the forms of the Game Awards 2023? Because I'm sure I'm pretty excited about this, especially concerning for not only which one of these games might able to claim the Game of the Year award, and on top of that, maybe some occasional announcements for time to time. So, but then again, we'll find out, and especially noticeable like we said this before, it's probably best able to mention more about it if we're able to go on to next week, just in case, no matter what, though, I just want to get these other topics out of the way first, so... This was an observation tower. Its main function was to send out radio signals to detect the enemy hunting them down from space. Once the enemy's presence was detected, the defense systems on the Starfall Islands were automatically triggered. Do you recall the tower on Rhea Island? This is similar. The tower here on Oranos Island has already been activated. The great threat that destroyed the Ancients is near. Anyway, so I believe we've only just got about two more character directions left, which there are one for Dr. Eggman, and the last one is for Knuckles. So, I suppose we should probably go after Dr. Eggman one first, because I'm pretty sure from the, the fact, no matter what though, he's actually quite close as far as I'm aware. But either way though, I suppose, well, that might be seems to be the case. So, anyway. so full of nature this isn't your doing is it don't blame me for that according to the records in cyberspace all of the native creatures were transported to another island during the battle that led to the extinction of the ancients with no one to return the creatures the island's ecosystem suffered major disruption only a few small insects survived the Ancients must have been fully committed to the battle to pull off such a large-scale transportation plan. Alright, so we've only got one more character interaction left, and that is, of course, Knuckles himself. So because of that, so of course, we still need able to just fast travel for this particular cyberspace portal right here. So thankfully, we can able to utilize the spin dash as well, just in case it makes the process a bit more faster. So because of that, though, yeah, and I think, suffice to say, that's every single character direction's pretty much done now, so... Will the Coco really be useful to us? I don't know for sure, but I hope they will. <laughs> I've only seen them get scared and run away. I've seen how strongly they feel for others, even though they look differently now. 
Well, it's worth a shot. I don't think the enemy will expect the Coco to do anything. So, no matter what though, I suppose that I don't think we can probably bump into any cutscenes for a little while until we're able to proceed to the final battle, which again, we'll save that for last, just in case it'll be a nice way to able to conclude everything for the majority of Sonic Frontiers as a game itself. So because of that, now before we switch back to Sonic right here, I need to find the last Coco skill points because as a result, I totally forgot that particular spot over there. So I suppose we're able to try to figure something out first. So anyway, and also I found it a little bit uh, strange is potentially speaking of is that a lot of people seem to don't really enjoy Disney's Wish after all, mainly because uh, some people complain about the forms of the soundtrack or potentially speaking though with the art style and not only that, um, I believe if I recall correctly is about the fact that they seem to able to do not like the actual story because the story is pretty generic, at least when it comes to some of those uh, other film standards these days, especially concerning for the fact that they still play it safe for the most part, so but either way though, despite I still have not seen the film yet, but what I've heard is about the fact that the film is pretty generic, although it does have some bit of potential in the end, but sadly though, it's about the fact that the actual critics reviews seems to get a lot of mixed reception to it. It also doesn't help about the fact that I'm pretty sure the box office is probably not going to go too well either. Well, it's hard to explain, but I suppose we should probably save that particular topic in a later time. So I suppose it really doesn't matter. So either way though, so I'm pretty sure we've gone through every single, you know, every character directions now. And on top of that, we somehow searched for every single uh, Coco skill points. So all we need left now is of course not only Guardian battles, but also with the forms of the final two missions we need to complete for the cyberspace stages, and not only that, the final battle to proceed, but then again, we'll save that for last. So, either way though, let's switch back to Sonic, so just in case we can able to go ahead and traverse into, oh, let's get started with the forms of 4-F, just to get this out of the way. So, hopefully though, it won't be taking me that long to able to actually complete those uh, final two missions, assuming, of course, I need to know exactly where the layout is going to be, because no matter what though, it's been about quite a few days since we've actually uh, experienced those specific uh, stage layouts like these ones, so... Although I'm pretty sure it's possible for the fact that, well, uh, for what I can gather with 4-F, uh, it's basically it's like a harder version of uh, the uh, one of those cyberspace uh, segments in during even though it's hard to explain because like like I said before it's been a very long while since I actually have last played this on a base game at least specifically on the Xbox one version or the switch version to be more specific but as a result no matter what though I'm pretty certain for the fact that we are almost done with every single aspects of those cyberspace stages so I mean, don't get me wrong, I do manage to able to, surprisingly enough, manage to enjoy those from time to time, but getting those specific collectibles is absolutely fatiguing of able to actually get every single collectibles all in one go. Although, luckily though, you don't have to necessarily try to able to get them all though, all in one run, unlike the forms of how it does it on Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time, if you really want to go after the perfect relic, then you have to go for a lot of these things all in one go, at least depending on what levels you go into, like uh, box trading or breaking all the boxes, as well as the Womp of Fruits and without dying a single time, and on top of that, with the hidden gems or something like that, or probably something else entirely, because mind you, I haven't exactly uh, gone back into Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time for some time, for the likes of the Switch version, but that's just mainly because at this point in time, I'm still busy playing through Super Mario RPG as a remake anyway. Now, I'm still about to be preparing for the upcoming games for the majority of 2024 before we move on to the next generation of Nintendo systems. So, but we still have no idea of what the speculation is going to be about for the next Nintendo system and during at some point in next year's holiday season for 2024. But I suppose we'll find out and see what happens in due time. So because of that, yep, we've pretty much gone through everything for World 4-F, or should I say the Cyberspace 4-F. So yeah, we only got one more mission left and that's of course taking place in journey forms of Cyberspace 4-I. So anyways, let's get into the forms of the most unfortunate things 
I would like to address something about this. It's potentially speaking though, I no longer have myself some fan-made games onto my laptop right now, which there are quite a number of uh, fan-made games, which there are Sonic Robo Blast 2, and on top of that, Sonic Triple Trouble 16-bit Remake, and on top of that, Kirby's Dreamland Advance, and also a... Um, a... M2R stands for another Metroid 2 remake and also Sonic Air Angel Island Revisited or should I say Sonic 3 AIR and I suppose that's about it basically because the reason why I no longer have those fan made games onto my laptop at the moment mainly because at this point in time we're actually getting very 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 close until we expect it that we can pretty much guarantee to able to have ourselves our next upgraded laptop soon. So because of that though, I'm still pretty excited and it gives me some high expectations to know of what exactly what the next laptop we're able to expect to obtain. Because at this point in time, is that currently my laptop, specifically the Acer one as we still got at the moment, has now been suffered by quite a number of things. First of all, the clamshell is going to be almost entirely broken. Not only that, my battery life is terrible at this point. And not only that though, is that the buffering times is a little bit more slower than I was expecting will be. So because of that though, yeah, I did somehow manage to able to realize about this right from the start though. So, and as you can tell, I somehow managed to screw up on that specific stupid jump right there, despite the fact that we're on low gravity right now. But as a result, no matter what though, still, it's probably is my least favorite mission objectives in the entire game to me though, is to able to take those animals into their safe spots, which as a result, yeah, it's just... Well, no matter what though, certain mission objectives did somehow manage to feel a bit self-explanatory from my book, which there were not only just trying to able to find a hidden goal, and on top of that, just able to actually just try to find, you know, the numbered rings, but this stupid animal rescuing bit that just kills whatever I do manage to able to try to able to do multiple trial and error situations sometimes. Not only that though, that I was expecting to try to able to actually find those um, on my own time for a bit, or should I say, I was expecting to try to able to find most of those things without even looking up. But there are quite a few times I just give up and looking at them. So because of that though, because sometimes it can be very well hidden. Whilst other times though, it can be a lot more stingy and difficult to able to actually just try to able to get utilized with that specific stuff in mind. I mean, it's just, it's a lot of busy work, you know. And especially it doesn't help about the fact that if you ever try to able to figure out where exactly where these animals can be, there are quite a number of times I have to able to look it up. So because of that though, without even trying to utilizing, well, assuming if you're trying to don't use walkthroughs and guides or something, even though it's a bit tricky to explain, because no matter what though, I'm just basically just want to get this game finished before we move on to, you know, potentially speaking in the future for the likes of Sonic Superstars, which I was very curious to able to try that game out. Well, I've already did on the Switch version, despite it does have some bit of rough around the edges at some point. And on top of that, my game keep crashing every time whenever we go to the final stage in the game, between two playthroughs of the game, and before the uh, the last story segment. Spoiler alert for those who have not uh, experienced the game yet, but uh, as a result of that particular matter though, that's as far as I can usually try to able to describe about the forms about the fact that, well, you probably get the idea, so... Alright, thankfully this is the last one, so hopefully we should be able to try to dodge as many of those cars as much as we can, and also just try not to utilize springs or anything else like that, because that can really mess you up if you decide to able to go for this this way, so... There we go. All he needs left now is just to complete the level. Thankfully, we don't need to find a hidden goal again, because technically we've already achieved that. Ever since in journey forms of whatever we first got there. Especially concerning for the fact that I thought it was a little bit odd to me though. This is the first ever cyberspace stage I've ever experienced during the course of in the Final Horizon DLC update, which is kind of surprising. So, I know for a fact that for a lot of uh, reasons for that is because, well, I did not know exactly what specific uh, placements for those cyberspace portals could be placed, but either way, though, that's saying something, I suppose, so. But uh, potentially speaking, though, folks, we are basically now finally done with every single aspect 
of the cyberspace stages for the majority of Sonic Frontiers. So because of that though, although to be fair though is about the fact that despite it was actually quite exhilarating, but I will admit though right away is that getting every single aspect likely of for its collectibles and stuff, like I said before, it's absolutely fatiguing of how much are uh, repetitive, or should I say, that if you try to replay for the exactly same exactly the same stages again, well, there's no doubt about that. There's a lot of repetition that's going to be involved when it comes to doing the exactly same things over and over and over again, but just with different stimulations of some form or another. I mean, I say that repetition a lot, but either way, though, that's just the way I feel about it anyway. But either way, I suppose no matter what, though, I would say the best cyberspace stages in the entire... Uh, DLC to me though, is still honestly goes the forms of 4-C, just because it's not only is the quickest, but it's also it's pretty straightforward, especially concerning for the fact that, thank goodness, that we don't have to worry about just trying to take those animals into their safe spots, as I've mentioned about this before. Not only that though, is about the fact that what helps out a ton, that that was actually one of the shortest cyberspace stages in the entire DLC. And not only that though, thankfully the loading times does not hinder us during the course of the majority of this particular point. So, and I believe we've gone through every single mission in the forms of inner cyberspace stages in the Final Horizons DLC update. Not only that, we've gotten every single S ranks in the entire game, so that should be well of an accomplishment, despite the fact that it's not worth anything besides bragging rights. And, uh, all we need left now is just, well, the last two things, which are, oh boy, taking down the Guardians, and not only that, proceed to the final battle. So, let's just hope about the fact, no matter what though, it won't be nearly as frustrating as the forms of how it does it for that particular godforsaken, uh, Master King Coco's Trials, because my god, that was a nightmare. Which, we've already addressed about this already, ever since in Dreddy Forms have been the last few weeks ago, so... For now, let me just go ahead and grind some more of those rings, so hopefully we'll be able to max out our rings count again, after getting hit by the forms of that man Master Ninja Plus several times, because I was still not expecting for the forms of the attack pattern or anything else like that, so... But yeah, that's as far as saying goes, that's as, free, uh, that's as far as I can usually try and able to describe about the forms of today's topic, especially because, well, at this point in time, maybe I might also give Telltale another chance to be able to see what the story connections is going to be all about, but like I said before, I have much more of a low expectations for able to actually decide able to know what the stories unfolds for the sake of the forms of certain episodes coming up, for the sake of the forms of the YouTube series, so, at least to be more specifically when it comes to, like, you know what I'm saying, tell your tale, or anything else like that. So, with that being said, folks, I suppose we should probably end things off for this point right here. So join me next time for more of Let's Play of Sonic Frontiers for the PS4 and you name the rest. Obviously, we're about to take care of every single Guardians, and after that, we are pretty much going to have to go for this proper ending conclusion to the game by going into the final battle. So, I have no idea how long this will take to take down all of these Guardians, but wish me luck, I suppose. So, I'll see you guys until next week. Later, fellas.